All right, welcome back to the channel. So, Tiafimo Lopez uh, puts Javante Davis and Devin Haney on notice and says that he is going to give them their first loss. All he has to do is get past his mandatory, and then it's going to be on. Let's talk about that and what he said about Tim Bradley and Andre Ward. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to do a Tiafimo Lopez video. This usually creates a lot of drama because people get real sensitive when you say that Tiafimo Lopez is acting like a buffoon. But Tiafimo Lopez was acting like a buffoon after he beat Vasily Lomachenko, and that's just what it is. However, in the recent interview that I heard from Tiafimo Lopez, he actually pointed to conversations or asked about conversations that he had with uh, Andre Ward and Tim Bradley that might have centered him a little bit more. And specifically that what he said was, look, Tiafimo Lopez is about respect. If Andre Ward, uh, Tim Bradley, and people that are senior in the boxing world to me are giving me advice and telling me, hey, man, maybe you should think about this. Maybe you should think about that. That, hey, man, he's all about respect. And that's what he'll do. So I'm really encouraged. You know, when I before, I got to tell you, I was not. Because Tiafimo Lopez came out, first of all, not giving Vasily Lomachenko a rematch. That is ridiculous. I believe for all of the stuff and all of the accolades and all the things that Vasily Lomachenko was, was credited with, the very least thing that that man should be able to get at lightweight is a rematch in order to see if he can win that fight. That fight was a close fight, but Bob Arum pishawed it. Tiafimo Lopez pishawed it. So I was like, man, come on, what is this? I thought Vasily Lomachenko was the best fighter ever, um, better than everybody else. He lost one fight. Why can't he get a rematch? Anthony Joshua lost a fight to Andy Ruiz. He got a rematch, right? Other people get rematches. Why can't Lomachenko get a rematch? That created a lot of drama in the minds of other people as if I didn't have any respect for Tiafimo Lopez. Although my respect for him got yeah, a little bit smaller, I still got to acknowledge that the, that the young man is one heck of a fighter and that he absolutely is the top lightweight. He deserves that acknowledgement as the top lightweight in the world. He is the WBO champion. He is the, he's the WBO champion. He's the IBF champion. He is the WBA champion. And he is this whatever you want to call it with the franchise champion. Just garbage. That more than likely was asked for, well, you know, that's the Canelo belt. But anyway, it got moved over to Lomachenko and then got moved over to Tiafimo Lopez. I didn't have any respect for that franchise belt, man. I don't. And I don't have any respect for the conversation that goes on saying that Tiafimo Lopez doesn't need to fight Devin Haney next because that is a unification fight. That is an undisputed fight. Nobody, as far as I know now, is calling Tiafimo Lopez an undisputed champion because it's sunk into people's heads that somebody's disputing it, and that is Devin Haney. So the, I, the fact that he now seems much more reasonable is that the better way to say it I was almost shocked he said look I'm going to fight Devin Haney I'm going to fight Javante Davis and I'm going to give them their first losses I just got to fight my mandatory and then it's on if that's the case if that stays true then cool water under the bridge man you fought your mandatory you went on ahead and fought uh Devin Haney Javante Davis, though, is still at 130 pounds. But if you can't get that 130 pound, how about you fight uh, Vasily Lomachenko and not have Vasily Lomachenko have to go through some six foot tall Nakatani who should probably be fighting at 147. You know, the Nakatani that gave you a bunch of problems, right? Why did he give you so much, so many problems? Because he's a welterweight. He has skinny legs, though. Very skinny legs, which probably allow him to get down to 135. But by the time he gets in that ring, that dude is well into the 147, 140s. The guy is almost six feet tall. 
Why should Lomachenko have to fight that awkward craziness in order to get a shot at titles that he should have had a rematch clause for because that's what everybody else does. But that's just my opinion. Tim Bradley and Andre Ward, I don't think, were pushing him towards that Vasily Lomachenko fight. But I hope what they're saying and the advice that he took is like, look, Tiafimo, you're going to have to pay at least lip service to these fighters, man, because nobody's buying this act. Like, I'm not going to say what they would say. This is what I would say to them. Stop acting like you're, you are the man. You are the number one lightweight in the world. But don't act like you're the only lightweight in the world, okay? I'm sh the, I don't know what the largest company in the world is. At some point in time, it might have said it was Walmart or something, okay? Say Walmart is the largest company in the world, all right? Just because Walmart is the largest company in the world that doesn't make Apple small, okay? Just because IBM is gigantic, that does not make, um, I don't know, Comcast, whatever that is, that doesn't make them small, right? There are multiple, fi there are multiple fighters that are big name fighters that are significant fighters in weight classes, even if they're not considered to be the number one guy. Clearly, Devin Haney fits that bill. Clear. I don't even want to talk about the Javante Davis portion of it. The Javante, the some of the things that Tiafimo Lopez said about Javante Davis was like, man, do they teach? Was he from New York? Do they teach math there? This man has sold out arenas at least what six different arenas. I do believe he sold out in Atlanta. He sold out in Baltimore. He sold out in New York. He sold out in LA. He sold out to the extent that he could in San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio, Texas is the South. Atlanta is the South. Your boy is the, the West Coast is LA is in the West Coast. Baltimore is North. New York is East. And Baltimore is East. It's literally Every part of the compass this man is sold out of fight on in the United States. If you split it into four quadrants, boom, boom, there, 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 and there, the only one he ain't sold out would be, would be Northeast. That's it. And that's only because Montana, Utah, and all that ain't got enough people in those states to sell out a boxing match. It's just nobody's out there, right? So, Tiafimo Lopez acting as if he has sense. Finish your mandatory, and I like that. I like the fact that he said, look, I have to take care of my mandatory. I find that a little odd, though, seeing as wouldn't Devin Haney be your mandatory for the WBC? Oh, I forgot you're a franchise, so you don't have a mandatory. But now, with whatever belt, you understand the necessity of defending your mandatories, right? Anyway, I don't have a problem with him going with his mandatory beating his mandatory, fighting his mandatory, because mandatories deserve the fight. And some of these guys, if they're not a mandatory, they'll never get an opportunity to add a title, man. That's just what it is. You saw what happened with Errol Spence Jr. and what he had to do to get a shot. Had to go all the way over there, had to force himself to be the mandatory for Kell Brook after the, after the guys in the WBC and WBA ducked him, had to go all the way over there to become the mandatory. Then once he wins his wins that belt... Right? Once he wins that belt, boom, now he becomes a star. He was a mandatory at a point in time. That's just what it is. I appreciate that out of Tiafimo Lopez. And I do appreciate him saying, Tank Gervonta. Not, uh, oh, we'll see what they can do. Man, they need to prove themselves to me and all that. No. They've already proven themselves to boxing fans, just like you have. I would love to see that the next Tiafimo Lopez fight. I'm going to watch it no matter who it is. He's a great fighter. I do enjoy watching him. But hopefully this, this advice that Tim Bradley and Andre Ward gave him is something that will lead to great fights happening in the world of boxing. Anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think. And with that, I'm, and with that, I'm out. Peace.